D no wheel drive 229 here and so y'all know I'm getting my s5 service getting it checked out trying to figure out what's going on with the oil consumptions kind of weird using a lot of oil they're checking that out doing the service 35,000 miles so they gave me a loaner a4 so of course gotta do a review so uh, we're gonna walk around it first <clears throat> and uh, we're gonna do it vlog style because I actually don't have my GoPro so, um, I'm just gonna do it vlog style. I might throw a little quick edit of it up before, but uh, this is the S line one. It looks pretty good in person. I don't know if it comes through as well through the video, <clears throat> but in person, it's definitely a smooth car. Definitely a smooth car. Trunk space, very big. Fit two good sized two suitcases in there. The wheels, uh, they're okay. They're okay. That's all I'm gonna say is they're okay. What do y'all think? The wheels are okay. Not good, not bad. Just okay. Daytime running lights look great. I don't know if they come through. I don't know if they come through well in the daytime. But. So as far as exterior looks, uh, get in the car, get inside. This is where the car shines a bit better. Um, as far as exterior looks, I think it looks pretty good. Let me know what y'all think. Uh, definitely for a person who is in the market, which that's why I'm, I'm going to try to do this review in the mindset of a person who would be buying an A4 because obviously a performance guy is probably not going to be looking at A4. So this is probably just for your school teachers, for your, you know, just regular people who want a reasonably nice car. So that's the mindset I'm going to go through this review with and not the mindset of I want 800 horsepower and I want 0 to 63 seconds. Mm, not going to happen. So um, as you sit in the car, next thing we notice, very nice infotainment system. Adi's a... Uh, really stepping their game up here with the infotainment system um, everything feels pretty good to the touch this leather is definitely not the Napa leather in my s5 it does not feel nearly as good I mean it feels all right but it's kind of feels like a basketball um, I don't know but I guess it's the base model I guess I guess you get base model leather but um, I mean for most people it'll be just fine this now this feels really good I really like this. Now this is um, some nice quality right there. It's a nice place to be. You definitely can sit in here and chill for, you know, the person who's looking for this car, if you're looking for a daily, a lot of room back there. I can definitely sit behind myself and be comfortable. And you can switch the view here. So yeah, this one has the virtual cockpit. Um, very nice. This is one of the better things Audi has done in my opinion. Now that is just really cool, really clean. Um, love it, love the virtual cockpit. The best part about the car in my opinion. We got the banging Olsen sound system. It sounds pretty good. Uh, let's turn something on for y'all just a minute. Y'all know I love music. Uh, 
let's go to the radio. Hey. So yeah, don't want to get copyrighted because they will do that, but sounds really good. Um, I love that song, by the way. Flip it over to me real quick. Yeah, but that's just a quick impression of the interior. Very nice. Um, I've only had the car for about two hours now, so I've been driving around, and it's very comfortable. The seats are reasonably comfortable, like I said. Um, interior is a nice place to be, pretty much. Cut and dry, especially, like I say, with the virtual cockpit. You guys should sit in a car with a virtual cockpit. Definitely a step forward. A step forward, period, for Audi. Love it. Sounds good. For daily drivability purposes, the interior is a nice place to be. The leather could be a little better, though. Yeah, that's the only thing. A lot of room in the back, too. I don't know if I mentioned that, but um, I sat behind myself earlier. I had plenty of room. I'm about 5'11", so um, I had plenty of room. Definitely, you could fit five people comfortably in it. Now, moving on to the driving dynamics. Now, once again, this is just something for people who, you know, would want this car. So, you know, not, you know, trying to drag race, not trying to do all that crazy stuff. But the performance, it's not bad. It's kind of aggravating taking off. I was going to give you the 0 to 60 time, but first of all, know that when you hit the pedal, there's no reaction. For a good second, you, you just, like, what the, f you know, like, does the car work? And then it takes off. I don't know what's up with that. It seems like a pretty huge oversight. It's very aggravating. That's, I would mention that first off to anybody considering this car, the lag on the tranny is horrible horrible lag on takeoff and I know for me it would get on my nerves and it would almost be a deal breaker that's how bad it is for most of you you probably won't care um, if you're looking at this car but a good half second lag when you're taking off however 0 to 60 once the car actually starts moving is 5.3 seconds so that's a whole second faster than the last gen a4 I believe so definitely a step forward with that you're actually not too far off of a Lexus LC 500 for like $70,000 less. Power is good enough. For anybody considering this car, you're never going to be lacking for power. 252 horsepower, had to find it. 252 horsepower, 273 pound-feet of torque. This car also has the Ultra trim, and that has a little less, 190 horsepower and uh, 230 pound feet of torque so that one's definitely a little slower but um for the for the regular one with the two liter turbocharged engine in it uh expect 60 to happen in a little over five seconds and uh definitely plenty of power doesn't sound good at all so as we take off here that's definitely another thing to note is it does not put my seatbelt on it does not sound good at all in the least bit it's quiet car but if that's what you're looking for definitely go for it because I mean like I say for a daily car you don't want a lot of noise you know that'll work but um, if you want performance or good engine sounds no um, and so as we take off here and like I say I just got this car as a courtesy car so I did not expect to do this review so I probably should have brought my GoPro, but I didn't. So I'm just gonna drive around with one hand while I vlog with this and it's gonna work and you're gonna keep watching and you're gonna enjoy it, okay? Okay, so <clears throat> taking off here. Okay, so it didn't lag as bad that time. So if you kind of pre-touch the brake, I mean pre-touch the pedal a little bit, the accelerator, it won't lag quite so bad, but it's still definitely bad. Um, acceleration. Wow, no lag still there. <laughs> Sorry, Adi, that lag is horrible. Horrible. Tranny is not that great at all. Steering doesn't feel that great. A little bit earlier, I was more spirited driving. Like I say, obviously, I'm using one hand now, so I can't drive super spirited. But I, but I have. Like I say, I've had the car for about two hours. Meh. It drives like an A4. How you would expect the base model to drive. I will say that the 328 probably handles a little better. Even with the Quattro, because this one does have Quattro. Meh. As far as handling goes, I would rather have the, the 328 in that respect. 
for what you'll need it for I mean this is pretty much perfect like I say I mean interior nav my only issue another issue I have with this car though is price so we have to talk about price and competition so that's what we'll talk about next because I mean I feel like for an A4 performance wise I mean that's all you really need to talk about I mean what else do we really need to talk about I mean it's reasonably fast steering's okay uh, acceleration yeah um, I mean, that's pretty much it but the, but the a4 like i say i'm putting myself in the mind of the consumer who would want an a4 and it's definitely suffices for that but now we have to start thinking about okay what competition is there what do we want to do so you got your 328 i mean even if, if you want the ultra which is the slower a4 then i guess you could consider the 320i too but definitely we got your 328 and we got your c300 so which one am I gonna get? Um, I have not driven the C300, but it looks better, which is saying something, because this car looks good, but I'm gonna take the C300 every day, twice on Sunday, I'm taking that. The BMW, mm, I'm taking this one over that as far as looks. Um, Interior-wise, once again, C300, taking the cake. And the Audi's probably second again, and the BMW's probably last, because that BMW leather was horrible. This leather is not great, but the 328 leather was trash. So, um, that's what I would do as far as that. Driving dynamics, I would have to look at the numbers again, but I believe all these cars, I mean, this is 5.3 seconds, that's middle of the road for the segment. You're not gonna be, I don't think you really care about tenths of a second, you know what I'm saying? If you're buying an A4, if you're buying a 328, if you're buying a C300, you don't care about tenths of a second faster to 60 so they're all pretty much the same i mean you do you really care if you're buying an a4 probably not you just want to be reasonably comfortable so for that if you really like the looks of the audi i would say go for it um in my brief time with it it's definitely been nice but the c300 may be better because also this car is kind of expensive this car is i think this one is forty-eight thousand. yeah I don't know for for that amount of money uh i'm going mercedes sorry audi i have an audi i love audi but the car cost too much cost too much that's it um if this car was maybe five thousand dollars less i would say go for it but if you're considering brand new i would definitely go for the mercedes the bmw i, I just don't like how the base I don't, I don't like how the base ones look. Now, if you if you get the BMW, if you get the BMW with the M Sport package on it, that changes everything, and that looks really good. So, um, you know, you can almost pretty much make them look kind of M3 ish, ish. So, you know, mm, that's something definitely to consider. Um, I guess it just comes down to prefer personal preference and which brand you, you really rock with because they're all pretty much the same I mean a4 328 you know yeah I will say also I don't believe that the lag on the BMW is this bad that would be, get really aggravating I, if you if you get nothing else from this review understand that when you push the gas there is lag lag so yeah I mean definitely go check one out for yourself um like I say I, I'll pan and get a, a quick shot of the interior again just, just before we go here definitely nice um, you know, we're cruising along right here um, Out in the country and I'm very comfortable right now. I could be jamming out to my music and um, Sounding pretty good. Like I said, we do have Bang & Olsen in here. This is actually a pretty well optioned one um, Like I say, it's the S line, but for $50,000, I don't I don't know Get more shots of the interior I don't know so to wrap it all up would I spend my 50000 on this car? No way. But for a person who really likes Audi, who, you know, is just looking for, you know, a good daily car to get back and forth and be comfortable in, look reasonably good, this car will do that. Because if you pull up in this car, it does look nice. People will still, you know, recognize that you have a very nice car. Audi has a lot of brand recognition now. It's kind of crazy. Audi, probably more than BMW, I don't know about Mercedes because the C300 does look really expensive. It looks really nice. 
I don't know about that, but as far as the Audi versus the BMW, this car definitely, if you pull up in it, looks more expensive, looks nicer. When you sit in it, it feels more expensive. It feels nicer than when you sit inside of a 328. Especially if you get one with a virtual cockpit, that's an option you must have. If you get that one, it feels like a really nice car. For people who are not car people, when you sit in this car, I will say, you will feel good, you will feel like you have a very nice car, you will feel a sense of accomplishment. Just very nice, so um, definitely go check one out, guys. If you're in the market for, you know, this level of performance base, like I say, it's gonna be fast enough for you. For anything you need to do, go and check one out. Um, that's pretty much it, I don't know what else to say. Just a vlog style review. You know, just to cut and dry everything you need to know. Oh, there's better wheels than the ones on this car. Get those other wheels. I'll try to find a picture and throw them up. But, uh, yeah, these wheels are okay. But, like I say, there, there are better wheel options to be had. Um, but, definitely, man, y'all go check one out. 2017, the current generation of Audi A4. Uh, it's nice, man. Good job, Audi. Except for the freaking accelerator. Fix it. Fix the transmission. It's trash. But other than that, it's a nice car. So, um, yeah, man, it's been D, No Wheel Drive 229. Uh, if y'all like this review, man, definitely like, share. Like I say, it's just a vlog style review. I, th I think I'm gonna start doing vlog style reviews. So, a little bit less informal, even though I am wearing a suit and tie. Had to do some errands this morning. But a more informal vlog style reviews, you know, just, you know, me and you, I want you to feel like you're really in the car with me, you know? You know, really experiencing it. You know, me and you are really driving down this, um, you know, slightly country road you know so y'all definitely like subscribe if you like this style definitely comment and let me know uh would you get an a4 what do you think is 48,000 too much for the car um, i think so but y'all definitely comment let me be let me know below let me know what you would get instead or if you would get this car do all that share it and subscribe i can't say that enough but yeah it's been d no wheel drive 229 y'all have a great day